I've been in uh, AI for 15 years and in technology for 30 years. I never thought that I will see what is happening, maybe even in my lifetime. I thought we'll be here maybe in 50 years. Hello, welcome to episode 143 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter, and I'll be your host. In today's episode, we are joined by artificial intelligence expert Manuj Agarwal. Working with clients such as Microsoft, IBM, and Pearson Education, Manuj holds four patents in AI and has immersed himself in the space for more than 15 years. By now, you've surely heard or have even begun using things like ChatGPT to enhance your real estate business. But with Manuj's tips, you can easily take that use to the next level. Throughout our conversation, Manu shares his tips for better interacting with artificial intelligence, not only to streamline tasks, but also learn how to be better communicators with clients. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents Podcast. You can find the show on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and now Amazon Music. Also, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or tip to share with our community, send us a message of feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Manu Jagarwal. The topic of artificial intelligence is absolutely fascinating, and with his tips, you will certainly be able to use this technology in your business. Really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, who you are and what you do. Hi, uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Manu Jagarwal, and I've been in the technology space for about 30 years. Um, I have uh, built uh, uh, technology, global technology for healthcare industry, education, real estate, uh, logistics, many different industries and worked with hundred, hundreds of startups, uh, worked with uh, giants like Microsoft, IBM, Pearson Education. Uh, I have produced about $500 million in value with the, with the technologies that we have built and, uh, imp uh, and impacted about 10 million lives. Um, and uh, today I'm one of the leading experts in the field of AI. Uh, I have four patents in artificial intelligence, uh, wrote two books. So that's me today. But where I come from, you know, I, I, I had a very humble beginning. Um, used to work in a factory in India for $2 a day, uh, six days a week and 12 hours a day. So, uh, so that's a little bit about me. Right, right. Absolutely. And, you know, just uh, reading a little bit about you, you know, your journey to Canada and where you're at now is is interesting how you got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, as it happens, you always follow a girl to uh, <laughs> you go to the other side <laughs> yeah. of the world. So, yeah, I met a girl. She was uh, born in Canada and uh, and then, uh, you know, we got married in India and then I, I came over to Canada. Right. So, Diving into the, uh, you know, your expertise in technology and AI, how did you get started in that field and really start moving in that direction to the artificial intelligence world? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, working in the factory um, was sort of uh, one day I was uh, just flipping through some business magazines and I was reading these, uh, you know, magnificent stories about these tycoons who have built their empires. And something inspired me to do something with my life, uh, reading those stories. And obviously, at that point uh, in time, I didn't know what what to do. But um, I found my passion in computers and programming. So I was extremely introverted um, kid back then. And I loved that the machines can just do the work and you, they don't talk mm -hmm. back. And so um, so I, I started doing that. And then when I came over to uh, North America, I started working with the uh, multiple companies, as I said, uh, working with uh, Microsoft and and uh, Pearson Education. So as I was going through all this, um, I, I've always uh, tried to be on the cutting edge of technology, like, you know, uh, learning more about uh, latest and greatest. And so I started working in AI around 2005, 2006, and we implemented some, some systems for universities, for students to do well in their exams, you know, uh, uh, be able to take their uh, degree programs uh, more efficiently, those type of things. And then I uh, implemented some systems for healthcare, helping uh, cancer patients, things like that. So it was uh, very um, inspiring to see what technology can do because uh, in some projects, what I realized was that AI, uh, and now, I mean, you know, I'm talking about like, uh, this is around 2011, 2012. So 
it's like 10 years ago even at that point technology was so um advanced that it was beating out uh, trained professionals like physicians with 20 years of experience ai was diagnosing things better than mm. trained physicians so i was blown away how this how powerful this technology is and um yeah i mean and then i you know i sort of kept sort of looking for projects which were more impactful um which involved like uh, bringing new ideas to life so that's where my patents come from where you know there were some like uh, innovative ideas that um, that uh, were brought to market and those products were immensely successful as well so our audience is you know real estate agents and brokers and you know it's one of those businesses that uh, especially for you know the the smaller brokerages little boutique brokerages or even the you know solo teams there's a lot of work that yeah, goes yeah, yeah, into yeah. real estate yeah. beyond the meeting and being in front of um, yeah, yeah, folks yeah. so obviously the uh technologies and, and artificial intelligence to kind of help streamline things has got to yeah, be yeah, absolutely. you know absolutely, something that yeah, they're absolutely. very interested in yeah yeah absolutely See, uh, the thing is that, um, you know, I've worked in real estate industry and uh, I know that real estate is um, first uh, all about relationships and second about documentation and communication. So um, relationships, of course, uh, you know, relationships are built by understanding the target audience and, you know, sort of sharing common ground uh, with the target audience. So what does that mean and how AI can help? Um, so as as human beings, unfortunately, the way that society is currently set up, we are not taught communication skills in in school. You know, so um, if we if if we start to use AI to improve our communication skills, and these are the two tips, very simple tips I'll give you. Um, use AI like um, and and when I say AI, I'm talking about Chat GPT, which is free for people to sign up. Start asking questions about your target audience. So start. So, but communication has two uh, two main roles. Like whether I can answer your questions in a in an intelligent way, and whether those answers will be memorable for you to remember. Because you know uh, uh, you need to be able to remember my name at the right time at the right place. So when you start to use AI uh, to ask better questions, then you can start to relate to your audience better. So. Meaning, you know, if you're trying to sell a small home, you can ask AI, you know, uh, what kind of people will like uh, to buy this home in this uh, area? What kind of constraints will they have? What kind of likes will they have? What kind of dislikes will they have? Now, the difference is that uh, prior to this AI being available, there was no other way but to actually go and talk to people and find out this information and then sort of refine your pitch and whatnot, right? But with AI, you can actually do it with AI. And so consider AI as a, as a chameleon. Like it can take on any any form, any, you know, any uh, color, any, any, any personality that you mm -hmm. think is relevant to you. You can just say, okay, you know, uh, behave like a small family with uh, a two-year-old kid. And, uh, you know, your income is uh, this and you drive this kind of car. Now tell me, what will you like in this house, home? What will you like about this home? What will you dislike about this home? So you can actually uh, be surprised how accurate these answers are. So, uh, so now you have a very, very good idea about you know how you can relate to your prospective buyer, how you can communicate. The next thing is telling stories, because once again, um, you know, if I'm able to answer your question uh, with a lot of facts and figures. You may be impressed by uh, by what I said, but you will not remember because our minds are not, um, uh, you know, they did not evolve to remember facts and figures. They evolved to remember stories. So what you can start to do is use AI to tell a story and you just have to input like, a, you know, a few sentences into, the, uh, into AI and say, hey, write a relatable story that even a 10-year-old can understand. So let's say you are, you know, in a in in a kitchen of a home that you are buying or selling or whatever, you know. Uh, of obviously, people describe the uh, the uh, the marble counters and the you know the the flooring and everything. But if you add some emotional story, you know, when I was standing here today drinking my coffee, it reminded me of the first time I entered uh, this home uh, with my spouse and how happy we were. And now that emotional story that you're adding. Um, 
about your presence in the home, that becomes memorable. And now when you share it with your prospects, um, you know, that story is, is going to captivate them more uh, more so than the facts about the marble floor and all that stuff. Uh, so if you start with that, then uh, you start to understand the power of AI and then more, uh, you know, you can start to look at your business um, workflows. Like what do you spend your time on? You know, I think real estate agents um, and people in general in real estate industry, they spend a lot of time in documentation, in, in communication. So imagine if you can automate all that and improve the quality and personalize it because that's another thing. Personalization is the key to success. Um, mm -hmm. And AI can help you uh, personalize each and everything. Like let's say if you want to send out 100 messages, 100 emails to your uh, uh, to your buyers or sellers or, or partners, there was no way to personalize it because it takes so much time and energy to write down each and every message. But now you can just uh, say, hey, you know, these uh, 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 like uh, personalize it based on this person's uh, likes and dislikes. And it will actually write a very beautiful message, uh, which is personalized to the target audience. So if you start to do these kind of things, you'll see immense value. And then, of course, uh, then you can start to uh, ask, uh, like, how I can automate more processes and uh, talk to people like me uh, who can uh, analyze your business and then say, OK, you know, this is where automation will help you. This is where it will save you 10 percent uh, of your time, 20 percent of your cost or what have you. Right. I really like that idea of almost, you know, building those client avatars right there within like the chat GPT, because, you know, I can just think of like just a use for, you know, if I have a particular home listing, but I have a group of clients that maybe are those younger families, but then there's the group that maybe is the retirees. Those are two different, you know, likes and dislikes. And I can craft a detailed, you know, email or, you know, social media, like whatever it is, I can craft, you know, two of those separate to send to those different subsets. And I didn't necessarily have to do it. I love that. Exactly, idea. exactly, exactly. And, and you brought up social media, you know, real estate also depends on social media exposure, because, um, you know, let's face it these days, if somebody wants to do business with you, they first, uh, they are going to Google your name, and then they're going to check out your social media. And so if you are able to utilize AI to, you know, uh, to share your story, to, to share your um, passions, you, to share your personality, uh, you know, that's what uh, makes the big difference between the sale or no sale. Like, I'll give you an example. I was talking to another um, group of real estate agents and um, a story came up where, you know, uh, uh, this real estate agent was a basketball coach. So as he shared his story about basketball coaching, that became the premise of the sale of the home because the the buyer was a you know um, uh, a, a parent of a teenager who loved basketball, and so that's uh, the common thread that they connected on. And the rest of the details of the transaction was like a secondary, right? So if you showcase your personality and you can use AI for all of this stuff, um, that makes a huge difference. Right. I really, you know, it, it's interesting how over the years, this, in, you know, this AI and, and all these different tools out there, how you really are kind of able to use them now as, you know, an additional, like somebody in the mirror that can talk back to you and give you really constructive feedback on things where it's, it, you know, it's very interesting. Yeah, exactly. And then the other thing is, you know, um, so uh, obviously I have expertise in AI, but I also have expertise in human mind, uh, neuroscience, psychology. So what happens is as you start to interact with AI, uh, because there is no emotional baggage when we talk to a human being, you know, a lot of like rejection, fear of rejection comes in and, you know, imposter syndrome comes in. But when you're talking to a machine, you know, even if you're incorrect, you know, it's, it, it doesn't hurt your feelings. But what it does is it starts to expand your mind because you are now learning how to communicate. So what I'm trying to say is AI is not only one way. You're not interacting with AI. AI is actually expanding your mind and your ability to communicate as well because whatever you learn, if it resonates with you, you're going to start to um, share that with other human beings. 
not only in business sense, but also in your personal life, right? So if you start getting better at asking questions, you will you will notice you will ask better questions, uh, uh, you know, when you're at home with your kids, with your spouse and and in other uh, other situations as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, just for us, one of the things we do, we create a lot of content videos and it, you know, sometimes sitting there and there with that scratch piece of paper, trying to come up with all the different ideas that's time consuming and just gets overwhelming. And I can hop on chat GPT and say, I want 10, you know, content pieces, you know, give me 10 ideas to create videos on for sale by owners or something like that. And, you know, about 30 seconds later, it spits out that yeah. list that I can really yeah. start diving into. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What, um, you know, outside of the, you know, the things like the chat GPTs and, and programs like that, what are some other uh, programs and tools that you see that real estate agents could really benefit from using? So uh, uh, the 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 key here is to understand. I always tell business owners uh, try to understand where um, what are the key KPIs you are tracking. Meaning, is it revenue? Is it uh, you know uh, time uh, the time the property sits on the market or uh, you know the the overhead costs that you have to incur to to buy or sell, whatever that is or. Uh, you know, then let's start working backwards from there and see where AI can help you. Because I can sit here and say, okay, you know, use this tool, use this tool. It's not going to be relevant to all the businesses, but let's say, you know, you are tracking revenue. Revenue is the key for every business. And you say, you know, um, our one of the main problems is like we make a lot of mistakes in filling out these forms or something along those lines. I'm just making it up, right? Mm -hmm. So if if we identify that is a problem, then we can implement AI to double check the human uh, input or even input that form automatically. And now it will save you time. Plus, you will uh, save a lot of mental uh, stress uh, knowing that there is no error there. And then it will start to reflect in your revenue as well. Right. So I always tell people that these are very, very uh, transformative technology. This is a vast field. So I, as I told you, you know, we implemented AI in medical um, situation, in education situation. So the idea is to really understand your business first and then work backwards from there rather than saying, OK, which tool do I use? Because if, if we if we go that way, we, we you know, as business owners, we'll get lost very, very quickly. Right. So is that something that when you're working with a business owner, do you suggest that they really, uh, you know, really kind of track every not just the end result goal but like every little step that it takes to get to something to where you can really kind of see what is needed well see as business owners you know our business is like our baby you know so <laughs> uh you know like we generally like even within two minutes of uh, discussion we can generally uh, un uncover okay what is the pain point we are dealing with mm -hmm. and everybody has a different pain point right uh, because everybody runs like if even if you have a real estate uh, agency business and there is an identical real estate agency business next door, their problems will be different because the owner who is running the business, their way of working is different, their team is different. And within two to five minutes, we can say, okay, you know, what is your biggest headache? And and every business has some headaches and they will say, oh, you know, um, my headache is I cannot find a good team. Okay, you know, let's see how AI can help you there. Uh, my headache is, you know, like um, uh, I cannot produce enough content. Okay, let's see how we can do that. Uh, my headache is I cannot find leads or buyers, right? So, okay, uh, let's see how can how AI can uh, figure that out. So th there is some key problems that businesses have. And then we work backward from there and say, okay, you know, what are the steps needed? The business owner doesn't need to I mean, if they are doing it, if they are not working with an expert like ourselves, then yes, they can sort of uh, even in this case, if funny enough, you can go and ask AI, what are the steps for me to, you know, solve my problem? Right, right. Absolutely. When it comes to, you know, I just think over the course of, you know, the last decade or so, you know, as this technology has kind of risen, we all look back at those movies you know, where 
the robots take over the world. But it, you know, it's so different now. You look at the way this technology, uh, the applications of it, it's not taking over, it's enhancing your life because it's allowing you to have those long, you know, those more meaningful conversations and more meaningful relationships with your clients. Absolutely. Uh, see, there is no technology, uh, in my opinion, that is nefarious or malicious in itself. Uh, human beings, uh, uh, we use the technology to, you know, uh, harm each other because of our own emotional drama. Uh, you know, uh, you can you can take fire, you know, we can cook food with it, we can, you know, get warmth from it, or we can burn down a home. So mm -hmm. it is us who, who you know, who, who uh, like use these technologies. So definitely AI um, is here to help us uh, to become, uh, you know, more efficient, more productive, uh, communicate better and all that. Uh, but uh, you know, th that is not to say it is not going to be used for harmful purposes. There's not going to be any negative impact. Uh, like with any technology, it's going to be good and bad. But I believe in the the overall good of humanity that, you know, it, this will actually make a big difference in our lives. Yeah, and I know for, you know, just for our community, it it really does help take back some of that time that you would be, you know, sitting at your desk by yourself, yeah, kind of yeah. trying to figure things out to where, you know, you're able to have those more meaningful and deeper relationships with your clients. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, deeper relationship with your clients, more productive. Like, you know, um, I have seen anywhere from 25 to 400 person uh, productivity gains in the last six, six months, even like not even talking back, uh, 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 my with my earlier work, um, but, and the, uh, the funny thing is, it's growing at an exponential rate. So, if these are the kind of results we are seeing in like last six months, imagine what's going to happen in five years. So the the uh, the flip side of that is, if people don't wake up today and don't uh, start embracing it, understanding it, incorporating it into into their business. They will be left behind in five years if because the, their competition is going to start using it and they're going to be much much further ahead, right? Right, absolutely. I mean, you know, even just for our use, I'll take a. Uh, I did it yesterday. I took a YouTube video script. You know, we we create educational videos. I took that script, threw it into Chat GPT, and said, "Write a blog out of this script for me." And boom, now we, you know, that took half of that time of having to sit there and figure yeah. that out. And it's just, it's so amazing where yeah. things are. And I can only imagine where in a few years are, but you're right. If you're not learning it and embracing it and really kind of implementing it, you are going to get left behind. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What, um, you know, so right now, obviously we've, you know, we've been talking about it, the, the chat GPTs and even like the, the imaging you know, AI where, you know, you're creating these different uh, images, which are amazing, you know, the things yeah. that people are making of those. What are some of the emerging technologies and the emerging, you know, uh, really offshoots or things that you see developing more over the next few years? Yeah, um, the first thing, the first layer will be, you know, uh, all the human senses, uh, like sound, uh, you know, uh, there's going to be video, there's going to be visual stuff. Um, uh, there's going to be obviously images, uh, images are there. So you can start to expect to see like AI produced TV shows, AI produced movies, like full length movies um, with, with no actors, no, but real looking, you know, like, uh, you know, everything will be very realistic. You you won't be able to tell these are not real people, right? Um, so, and then beyond that, there's going to be uh, AR, VR, which is already in development, but it's early stage. So you will be have you will be able to have immersive experiences. You know, maybe in ten years we'll have a Zoom uh, uh, Zoom call where we can just feel that we are in the same room um, together. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that will happen is hyper personalization because what happens is that because of industrialization, uh, we had to figure out how to make things work with the least common denominator. What do I mean by that? So, you know, if you want to buy a shoe, they will say, okay, we sell these shoes in 12 sizes. So if you are, you know, half size uh, bigger or half, half size short, too bad, this is the size you're going to stick with. But with hyper-personalization, with AI and things like that, as I told you in my previous um, 3D uh, printing example, we were able to custom foot, uh, custom fit that orthotic within two millimeters of accuracy for any foot, 
so you can imagine like you know uh, if you want to buy a t-shirt maybe they have it in five colors but then you know uh, if you want to go buy a tesla today you can pick pretty much any color right it's it's the same type of things that will start to happen in everyday uh goods everyday experiences hyper personalization and that's where you see everything is going like uh from netflix to amazon to you know all all of these companies they grew so big because they figured out how to personalize the experience for you to give you the right offers to give you the right products that you are interested in right and i think that's a great you know point to really drive home you know for our listeners is even with those emails that you might be sending out on an email you know drip campaign or any kind of marketing using this technology to really hyper personalize it to that specific lead in your pipeline exactly exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely well, i really do appreciate you taking the time to uh talk with us today this is always such an interesting you know topic and it it's something that because it is so big and so prevalent right now, I'm really interested to see where it goes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. I mean, uh, the the thing which I uh, tell people, which is funny, is like you know I've been in uh, AI for 15 years and in tech technology for 30 years. I never thought that I will see what is happening. Maybe even in my lifetime, I thought we'll be here maybe in 50 years, but it it's here now. And the and the thing is 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 exponentially growing. It's even difficult for for experts like myself to keep up, like what's happening, like every day, thousands of new platforms are coming out, new tools are coming out. So it's very exciting right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every every content software that I use, I mean, really, I feel like in the last two weeks, there's been some pop-up that comes up that says, do you want to try our new AI, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, description tool yeah, or, yeah. you know, with audio editing, there's I mean, Adobe has their own thing. You drop the audio in there and it sounds like it's coming through a professional microphone now. It's amazing. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Well, before we wrap up, um, you know, if there's people that's here that li are listening, that want to hear more from you and, you know, and, you know, kind of see where this technology is going, where can they follow you to uh, to get more? Yeah, you can visit my website, uh, Manu Jagarwal, my first name, last name, or Google my name. And you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. Uh, let me know you heard me on this podcast and uh, I'll be happy to chat with you and uh, share any insights I can. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thanks. I really want to thank Manuj for joining us today. Prior to speaking with him, I never really thought of using AI as a way to become a better personal communicator, but it definitely makes sense and it will be very interesting to see how things progress over the next months and years to come with this technology. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.